Okay, welcome fourth graders to the weathering uh, video test review. Okay, we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of different things to so make sure that you have your notebook out and you're, uh, you're looking at your notes so that you know what's going on. Okay, first thing that we should probably look at first is the facts. Okay, basic fact, which is what this whole thing is about, is the breaking down of rocks is called weathering. The breaking down of rocks. Okay. Next, let's go over a couple different types of changes that happen, okay? There is physical changes. Now, if you look at your notes here, physical change is a change that happens, but nothing new is formed, okay? You can see the sun is out in step number one. You can see the ice cream cone. It's nice and fluffy. In step number two, the ice cream gets knocked off, and the sun has melted it a little bit. What do you have here on the ground? You still have ice cream. The ice cream may not be fluffy. It may now have melted, so it looks different. It has changed size or form, but it is still ice cream. It has under, undergone a physical change. Nothing new has happened to it. It's still ice cream, okay? The other type of change is called a chemical change. Now a chemical change is when something new besides ice cream is actually created or formed. Okay? You have this iron chain. Okay? Now if you were to add oxygen and water to the iron chain, you get something called rust. Now rust is no longer iron anymore. It's something completely new. It's rust. Okay, so this is called a chemical change. A chemical change in when, is when something completely new has formed. Okay, this is ice cream to ice cream. This is iron to something completely new and different called rust. That's called a chemical change. So keep those thing, two things in mind as we uh, continue this test review. Okay. This side of the board, and there is one other physical weathering on this side of the board, but physical weathering, which is a lot of this stuff over here, is physical means that you can touch it. Okay? Physical means you can touch it. Okay? You can taste, see, feel, see it. It's made of matter. That's what physical means. You can touch it. It's made of matter. Okay? These are physical weathering examples, okay? For example, look at this mountain. You can see the rain, as it's been constantly pounding down on the side of this mountain, okay? It has eroded the side of this mountain. You can see it's made a little half circle. That's because everything that is made of matter is made of tiny little things called atoms, and we talked about that in a previous lesson. Now, you can see this little guy here. If you were small enough, you could actually rest on an atom, okay? You could touch an atom, okay? So this rain here is made up of tiny little guys called atoms, and they're constantly pounding into the side of this mountain. After a while, you can see it dug a little side, um, a little half circle into the side of this rock, okay? This, the wind, okay, remember wind is also made of tiny little things called atoms. So the wind is constantly pounding into this rock. Woo, 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 woo. And the wind, you could see, has made a little half circle into the rock. This is called abrasion, abrasion. Another one is called exfoliation, okay, exfoliation. Now, look at this rock here. The, the top of the rock has, has fallen off, okay? It broke off, okay? So now you're left with the other part of this rock. The top part of the rock, just like a dog pile, remember, if you've ever been in a dog pile at recess, everybody goes, dog pile, and they start jumping on one another. Well, the people at the bottom of the dog pile are going to be all squished and tight, the people at the top of the dog pile are going to be all relaxed because nobody's on top of them. The same thing is going on here with the atoms 
in this rock formation. Once this big piece has fallen off, the people down here are, not, are all heavy and squished because of all the atoms on top. As you slowly get to the top here, you can see the atoms are all relaxed and loose. Okay. So what happens now is you have like these layers in the rock. This piece breaks off, the top is loose now. Well, this loose layer is more likely to erode now or fall off. So it peels off like the layer of an onion. The next layer now is exposed and it becomes real loose. It falls off like the layer of an onion because it's, it's loose and so it's going to be more susceptible to wind and water blowing it off. And that keeps on happening and this rock slowly starts to uh, become weathered by a process called exfoliation. Okay. All right, let's move on here. We talked about abrasion, exfoliation, the water pounding, atoms, physical weathering. We went over a fact. We went over chemical changes. I totally missed something. Another physical weathering is by plant roots. Okay, The roots can actually dig into the cement, and if the roots are strong enough, they can actually chip away at the concrete. Okay, So plants is another way that weathering can happen. Freezing and thawing is another example of physical weathering. Basically what happens is if, let's say there is a small little crack in the cement. The water fills up that crack and when water freezes, it actually gets bigger. Okay, so the water comes in and then it gets bigger Okay, when it freezes. Now when it goes like this, it busts some of the concrete. Okay, so it makes the the, uh, the crack a little bit bigger, as you can see. This is Monday. Tuesday, once the water uh, evaporates, you can see it's no longer here, but it definitely made this crack bigger. On Wednesday, let's say it rains again, the water fills up that crack, it comes inside, it freezes, and boom, it busts the sides of the crack again. And if that continually happens, that crack is going to get bigger and bigger by the freezing and thawing. Thawing basically means uh, it goes from a solid state to a liquid state. Okay, It freezes and then thaws. Freezes and thaws. So when it freezes, it, it busts the sides of the wall. So that's freezing and thawing. And we've got two more things to cover here. When you have water, okay, uh, and you combine that with carbon dioxide in the air, you're going to get a thing called carbonic acid forms. Carbonic acid forms. And this is a picture of an underground tavern or cave, and all of the rocks have turned red. And there's a picture of that in your book. But basically, that's a combination of water plus the carbon dioxide in the air gives you that red stain that appears on the, uh, the rocks. Okay? Lastly, we're going to be talking about horizons and hummus. This picture here is a picture of layers of earth. And I put dates on here. Let's say 2007. And you have a picture of this in your notebook, so hopefully you're following along. Let's say the river drops off a whole bunch of stuff. We have plants, we have animals, we have rocks from down the stream, okay? And that layer stays there for a while, obviously. 2007, 2008 comes along, more stuff's added. 09, 2009, more stuff's added. 2010, more stuff is added to this layer. 2011 comes along now, and we have a big dust storm. Now that dust storm comes along and it drops off more things on top of these layers. Okay. Now let's say nothing happens in 2012 and 2013 and you know you'll have little things going on but let's say, let's say in 2020 there is a big drought because the sun was out. That's going to cause maybe some animals to die, some plants to die and that creates another layer. So what's happening is that through all of these years, different 
weathering events are happening and it's causing layers to build on top of layers. So this layer 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, and then 2000 layer, uh, the 11 layer comes along and another layer. And each one of these layers happens because new events are happening around it, new weathering events. Each layer of the soil, okay, are called horizons, and the decayed or dead animal and plant life is called hummus, okay? Well, that is the weathering test review. Uh, hopefully this has helped you a little bit and uh, you do well on your test. If you have any questions, you can contact me on Edmodo. You can contact me on Facebook or by going to my website, you can see the contact Mr. T Mr. P button where you can actually click a button and it'll uh, take you directly to my cell phone. Well, once again, hope you do well on the test and look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.